Well, it's my pleasure to be sitting down with George Nikai, Dover attacker. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking time out of the busy pre-season schedule to talk to the Dover fans today. Um, George, what have you made of pre-season so far? I mean, unbeaten at the moment, we speak just after the Welling victory. Uh, what have you made of it? Um, yeah, it's been going pretty well, to be fair. You've got to sort of take pre-season with a pinch of salt because I remember a pre-season where we didn't win a game and we started the season all right. So as long as the performances are good on the pitch, that's what we look for and the results are coming with it. So can't really complain. It's been going well, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, obviously Jake um, has got his first pre-season in charge. Yeah. And uh, how are the players relating to him? He's obviously made some changes um, and everyone seems to be at it. Yeah, he's um, been trying to, like, in training, it's been very intense. It's been, like, tough, to be fair, a lot of running and stuff like that. Um, and he's just been slowly, like, the ones that we signed is integrating, like, getting us all playing, like, singing off the same hymn book sort of thing and playing to his philosophy. And it's slowly, you can see, like, even Welling, like, it's slowly starting to click almost. So we've still got a few more games to go, but hopefully we keep going on that trajectory to the start of the season. Now, in terms of expectations, I mean, of course, the club have had a difficult few seasons. Everyone knows that. Um, I suppose to stop, you know, to win more games than losing would, would make a nice change, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, yeah it's, to be honest, it's, we want to win as many games as we can. I'm not going to sit and say that our goal is to make playoffs or something like that. I think we've got to take it game by game because I remember sitting here this time last season after the first few games, we got four points, we drew to Torquay and beat Slough and we were like, yeah, we're going to go for playoffs. I remember saying to people like, yeah, I'll, I'll be happy with the top half finish and you see how, what happened mm. that season. So, to be honest, I think it's just important to take it game by game and like not think too far ahead, just set short-term targets for a long-term goal sort of thing. The goal is, of course, to get out of the league, but you have to take it game by game almost. Yeah. There seems to be good people sort of coaching now. I mean, you've got Jake obviously in charge, you've got Mike there, Paul's coming as well. Yeah. <clears throat> seems to be a good backroom team. Yeah, it's good to be fair. They've given us a lot of information. Training's good, it's more professional. Um, yeah, they've looked after us a lot, given us a lot of information. Yeah, it's been going pretty well, to be fair. You just mentioned it's more professional. Could you give us a little bit of insight into what is more professional about it? Um, just like the setup, to be honest, from like when we get there to the training ground, um, everything's set up. Like water bottles are there. Like all, like everything just set up. Everything's like organised. It's got a structure to it. Where previously there wasn't much structure to it. It was sort of whatever happens, happens sort of thing, but there's a lot more structure to it. It's a lot more planned and thought out and it's specific to who we're against sort of thing. So, George, obviously you're a Dover boy. I mean, you were born in Ashford, but you lived most of your life here in Dover, brought up in Tower Hamlets, I understand. Yeah, um, yeah I was brought up in Tower Hamlets. There's a lot of good memories there. There's a few football pitches around, so I was always in there playing football. If it was at the Tower Hamlet Park or Emsville, I was always in there with football kicking it about and yeah got good memories there to be honest so tell me about your football journey how old were you when you started playing and uh, just tell us your earliest recollections um to be honest from the, when i was able to walk i was always kicking a football i was breaking something around the house and i would play for my first club when i was four like, i got straight into it from a young age and yeah for ever since then it's just constantly football 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 yeah, because it was Dover Rangers, wasn't it, that yeah. you joined? And just tell us your progression through the Dover Rangers. Um, yeah, so I started off at Dover Rangers. I was first with the B team because um, the A team manager said I was ball hog, so he didn't want me to um, be like with the first with the A team. So yeah, I was with the B team for a season, and then we played against the A team, and I scored a few goals against the A team and beat them, and then they took me in with the A team. So yeah, yeah. And ever since then, it was just upwards progression from there, to be honest. Yeah, and obviously you were a Dover Athletic fan as well, weren't you? I mean, I'm assuming you support a Premier League team, do you as well? Yeah, I support Arsenal. Right. But yeah, I've always watched and always had a close eye on Dover sort of thing because around the area, like going around the town and stuff, there was always Dover fans with like the Dover kit and stuff like that. And like, yeah, it was good memories. So tell us the earliest memories watching Dover. Do you remember the first game that you came to? What it was like watching from the terraces? Yeah, it was... Um... I remember watching my first game, it was, I think, Forest Green, Dover, it was on TV. And I remember, mm. I think, Ricky got a few goals did, that yeah. day. So, yeah, I remember watching that and thinking, like, this is, like, really good. Like, I remember, like, even when the stand was getting built and driving past, because my game was only down at the rec here. I just remember thinking, like, wow, this is like a Premier League club. Like, look at the stand, like, it's crazy. But, yeah, like, I've always watched Dover and, like, always kept an eye on them and, yeah. 
Can I ask you, who are the Dover players that you looked up to? Obviously, Ricky, everyone loved yeah, Ricky. Was there any Ricky others? Miller, um, Ricky Modest as well, he was good. Um, Nassim Legault, he was here for a while. Yeah, like all the like, attacking players always wanted to like be like them sort of thing. And well, if I can replicate what Ricky Miller done, I won't do too bad for myself. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, you came through the academy. Just tell us about that journey. Uh, who were the people coaching you and who were the players that you were coming through with? And, you know, just share us those experiences. I was with Baptiste. There was a few of us that were signed in the first year. It was me, Will Moses, Baptiste, Wilco, all of us, but Noah, who else? And Bifer, Greeny. So there was a few of us that came through together and, yeah, Mike was the coach. Um, I don't think first year we <laughs> saw eye to eye too much because um, I wanted to play football and they used to take me to some games and I wasn't playing, so I <laughs> told him that I wanted <laughs> to play football. So, yeah, um, yeah after, to be honest, we always had a good relationship, um, yeah. me, Mike and the boys, to be fair. Yeah. So, so obviously you turn that around, though, because yeah. you progressed through the academy. Um, so just tell us what Mike did for you, what you learned from him. What was the biggest lessons that you learned? Um, yeah, Mike, to be honest, made me a man from early, to be honest. And that's why I think I developed quite quickly under him. Um, he made me, like, there's things that he used to say to me, like he said, I was weak as, and I'm not going to finish it off. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he used to say that I'm weak, so I need to get stronger and like use my body a lot better because I was quite a skinny boy and quite a small boy, to be honest, when I first joined the academy. So, yeah, um, he made me a man from early and, like, tried to get the best out of me and saw that I came in as a striker and he moved me to the wing in, in the 10 because he saw how much I wanted to get on the football and stuff like that. So it was his idea, to be honest, of moving me from a striker to the, the, that position. And of course, you progressed through the academy and I believe you were about 18, weren't you, when you made your debut? And that was in the National League. Yeah. Just tell us your memories about that. I think Andy Essentaler was, of course, manager. Yeah, um, I came back from a big injury to be honest I didn't even play with the academy really I was out for a year and then they sort of chucked me in the deep end and said oh like do you want to trade with the first thing I said yeah of course I do like it was no hesitation about it um yeah I went and played my first game against Kingsley and came on last 20 and like it was like, a surreal experience for me because all that hard work and all that like to get back on the football pitch it sort of paid off and that's credit to Mike and Rob to be fair they like looked after me they made sure that I was sticking to my my uh, rehab mm. and like yeah like they uh, that it was like a surreal moment for me to like come back on the pitch it was yeah and of course playing at a decent standard the fifth division I mean I'd say the National League is as good as League Two really yeah just tell us what the standard was like and was it a bit of a shock to you um yeah so when I went there it was very very physical and to be honest like, I hadn't really fully recovered I remember playing the game where my left quad was smaller than my right quad. <laughs> Um, cause yeah, it was a big injury. So yeah, it was a massive, um, shock almost how like you had to be like physically there and like the boys like Baps and Wilco, they've like flew under it. Like they've really shone under that and yeah, them boys done well. It was a shock to all of us, but it was like a good moment for all of us because we're all together, like we all came as a group sort of thing. And yeah, we were in the first team, which was yeah, good feeling. And of course you've walked into a, Really difficult situation. Obviously, uh, um, you, you know, Dover ended up getting relegated uh, during that time, uh, just after COVID, wasn't it? Uh, where the, yeah. the club only made one point after yeah. the 12 point deduction. What did you learn from that entire season? And, um, you, you know, obviously, you worked for Andy Essen Taylor then. What was he like? Um, yeah, it was. It was a bit weird, to be honest, when you're in that situation where you're starting from minus points, you're already on the back foot almost, and it was quite difficult to recover. Yeah, so it was difficult um, getting the plus one. It was um, yeah. We struggled to get over the line, but we did. And like, when we won it, it felt like the best feeling in the world. And when we lost, it was difficult because you always want to win and we were competitive in a lot of games. I remember specifically the Chesterfield game. That was one of the games where... We went two one up, and I thought we've done it. Like in front of like a big crowd, I thought we were going to win it. And then five minutes later, we conceded two, and that was the reality of it, sort of thing. But yeah, it was a lot of learning curves, um, good experiences. Like you don't every day we have the opportunity to play against teams like Chesterfield, Notts County, these type of teams. But I was privileged enough to have that opportunity, and like, that's credit to Hess. To be fair, he gave a lot of uh, opportunity to the young boys, and like I think we done well for what we were. Um, 
we weren't good enough to stay out of the league, mm. but yeah, mm. it was good experience. But I mean, there was games that season where you were going toe to toe with some of these clubs and actually competing. I mean, mm. the Wrexham one's a great yeah. example where was it two 0 down and yeah. then was it five two up, up and then and lost then, six yeah. five. What are your memories of that day? Um, I weren't in the squad that no. day, so I wasn't there. But I remember like just watching it on like football focus and just seeing the score getting updated every like five minutes and it's like oh Dover winning Dover losing Dover winning and it just like, went mental and it was probably one of the best games in probably National League so mm. yeah it was good to like see the boys like especially the young boys like be a part of that game and yeah it was good memories and as I say you, lot, you let goals in a lot late on from you know, in hindsight, yeah. why was that looking back? What was it that you were doing wrong in those final sort of 10 minutes? I think it's just game management. It comes to game management, to be honest. Um, we were a young team, um, very young, to be honest. I think the like, average age was like 20 or something in that mm. team. So it was, came down to inexperience, I think. Um, so we, we've all learned from that, the ones that are still here. So we sort of manage games a bit better now. But it was like our first time being in that environment where you're winning and you're like, wow, like, this is unreal and then bang quickly like you play against you're playing against quality players and they punish you if you like take your eye off the ball for like even if for a split second so yeah that's what happened 